Really, the history started with John King, and he was principal of the school, the old Lisburn Road School for both deaf and, and, and blind children. And uh, he set, set this up some 150 years ago. But obviously, there's been a number of other Presbyterian uh, ministers since that, including George Grindle, who obviously I'd like just to pay tribute to him too in terms of the work that he did here over, over many years. Former teacher again at, at, the, at the School for Deaf Children. The deaf culture has many different facets. Uh, unless you've been brought up in it or immersed in the deaf culture, it's very hard to understand and to grasp all the concepts and the problems. And the it takes a long time. Um, well, growing up as a child with deaf parents, um, I suppose early on in the years, it, you didn't really feel anything different, really, and just until you were at that age where you could understand life a wee bit more when you were out and about with your friends. To be honest, I used to think that there was something wrong with my friends because they couldn't sign and we could and you know then you realise that we were the different ones and not that they were but to be honest um, it never really causes any trouble or bother really you know you just it's, it's part of life you just get on with it. Oh, I was very lonely very lonely I didn't have any deaf children in the neighbourhood I was the only deaf child in the whole area there was one very old man who was hard of hearing but I didn't know him very well when I was 16 my mum told me she wanted me to stay living in the farm and I said, no, I wanted to come up to Belfast. I wanted to come up to look for a job, and my mum was very disappointed. But I always would have travelled up at Easter and summer and Christmas to see my mum from the school I was boarding at. I would have travelled backwards and forwards. And the same with work, I would have travelled up for the holidays to see my mum and dad. And my mum did understand why I was happier, because I was able to mix with deaf people and communicate more easily, and I felt it was a lot better for me to mix with these deaf people. Certainly within the deaf community, um, they're very tight, they're very good to each other, they're very friendly. Um, you really could meet a nicer bunch of people, you really couldn't. Um, what you see is what you get with them and, and it's, it's just a great, I have to say, looking back now, um, I think, to be honest, it's probably a privilege that I've been allowed to be brought up in this community. They're very straight talking uh, and I, I find that to start very hard. Uh, one of the things I find as well is when they are signing, it comes across sometimes that they're quite aggressive, but it's not. It's just the way they sign and they get uh, intense in their signing. I even find now with the, the church here that people are always wanting to speak to you. There's more of a welcome, maybe within the hearing, the deaf church. The hearing church, people come and sit down. In the deaf church, they want to talk. They want to spend time talking to you. They want to help you. They want to support you, which I think is a fantastic thing to, problem to have. There's a range of uh, communication uh, used when uh, communicating with deaf and deaf and hard of hearing people. And obviously in Northern Ireland you've got British Sign Language and also Irish Sign Language. Um. Well, it's important to realise that sign language is a language in its own right and it has been recognised as such. It means to have some syntax, linguistical structure and vocabulary. And it's a very visual language, so it's not based on English. Well, my parents are both deaf and a lot of people have asked me what it was like growing up with deaf par parents and how did I cope, but to be honest, whenever you grow up like that, it's just part of your everyday experience, you don't know any difference. So to me, I was happy having deaf parents, but obviously I grew up doing sign language and what some people may not be aware of is whenever you grow up doing sign language, in the same way as you would have baby talk to your child, it's the same with deaf parents. So we had what we call home sign. And then I met my husband and whenever we were getting married, he said he obviously wants to learn how to communicate with my parents. So he wanted to go to a sign class, but he didn't want to be the only person going by himself. He wanted company, so I offered to go with him. And that helped me drop all my home signs. So I started learning proper BSL, British Sign Language. And we both went through stage one and stage two together. And then he decided he had enough sign language, but I thought, well, I might as well get qualified. So it was actually purely by accident that I became qualified to sign. And then a few deaf people heard that I'd been learning sign language officially and approached me to become an interpreter. Certainly with going to school, um, I think probably the bigger issues that, that we would probably have at an age back then was um, lack of interpreters. Um, there was things that you, you would have been, like when your parents were brought up to school for to see the teachers and things like that, probably 99% of the time you went in and acted as the interpreter. So interpreters are really a fairly new phenomenon in Northern Ireland. There wasn't really many of them before. And I was the fifth person to become qualified in the whole of Northern Ireland. We also then have to take into consideration people who have visual loss as well as hearing loss. And uh, communication in the 
with deaf blind people would be different and through touch and uh, using the deaf blind alphabet. Um, and then you've got those who need to lip read. And lip reading isn't as easy as it looks. It's a very, very difficult uh, skill. And uh, um, a, a number of uh, young children coming through schools now who are a bit mainstream and who are cochlear implants would be dependent, would be using uh, speech and residual hearing um, much more than it would have been in the past. But today we're moving into a situation where technology is, is, is seen as providing uh, opportunities for deaf people. For instance, cochlear implants, improved uh, hearing aids. I got a cochlear implant two years ago after wearing two hearing aids for 25 years. Before with the hearing boil, it was uh, very shy, I didn't get involved in anything because I didn't rely on my hearing too much. And then now with the cochlear, I can go back to the hearing world and do the things I learned in the, the F world. We can all text. Uh, texting is very important and it's a great facility uh, for the deaf community. In actual fact, Skype is now being used a lot by the deaf community to communicate with each other. The fact that it's made them more independent, that they could just text, fax, email and give them a more independent life. I suppose more than anything, it, it, it just gives them a bit more, more responsibility back to themselves as opposed to trying to find somebody else to do it for them. To be honest, I just look at the King and Church as it is because I think it's the easiest way of accessing it because of communication. Other Presbyterian churches out there would be basically for the hearing community, so that's why I prefer to come to the King and Church. It's an awful lot easier. You get a clear idea of what's going on. It's story based. There's songs that you can follow. The minister can sign, so that's why I love it. Main areas of the King and Church would be, first of all, to pastor and care for the people here. Uh, there's been a lot of help because the interpreters have helped me, uh, the deaf community themselves have helped me because you just can't preach as you'd normally preach. You can't use the cliches, the words, the terminologies you'd normally use in a normal sermon. It has to be more basic in a way that they can understand through PowerPoint, uh, through words that they understand. But you have to learn the culture and the language uh, so that you're not saying something that they will take in a different way than you mean it from the Bible. Well, Glenn is fantastic. He really is fantastic. He has worked really hard. In, in my time, things were very old-fashioned. Now he's changing things and it's going his way. That's good. It's good to see it and it's fine and it's great for the future generations, younger people coming on board. So whenever they see that Glenn has made changes, they might entice him to join. And then obviously we're going to be coming out of the picture. It's not a one-man ministry. They're actually claiming the church back and taking part, and that has made such a difference to the King, and I believe. I was born into the King and Church and christened there, and had gone right up until um, my early teens. Um, at that stage, George Grindle, Reverend George Grindle was our minister, which he was, he was very, very good, and he was well aware of the hearing children that were going to the church as well as the deaf. Um, we went to the youth clubs, we went to the Sunday schools. A fantastic opportunity, because deaf parents could bring their hearing children come along to the church as well. So it was a perfect opportunity for the whole family to come along as well because my son and daughter have come along with the person that's interpreted now and it was a wonderful experience. Everybody really enjoyed it. The Sunday school is actually held in this hall so the church is going on downstairs but the children come upstairs and that's great. They do Bible stories that the children really do enjoy. There's arts and crafts and the parents can come up and see what's happening afterwards. Actually through my father. He had brought me along here, but also the old school I went to in the Lisbon Road. We had brought us down. We had walked down Paris from the school to the church, and from then on until now, I've been coming here. Um, when I started working uh, with deaf people, it was, a, it was indeed with the children at Jordanstown School, and the children used to come here uh, for Sunday school, and the minibus would have come here each Sunday morning. Glenn continues to uh, work with the school and uh, taking assembly and, and, making, and ensuring your new children coming into the school are introduced to the uh, King and Church at an early stage. We've been welcomed in there, uh, very much so that we can go along there to classes as well as the assemblies. At one stage you had 300 of the odd children at Jordantown School, that is now reduced to, uh, to, to nowhere near that. And children are now going to mainstream schools who so have children who have cochlear implant, children with hearing aids. So they're, they're widespread across Northern Ireland and they're not having the opportunity to meet with the deaf community. Uh, we also believe very much that we need to get out there to the deaf community who don't go to church. 
There's a lot of deaf young people out there who have no connection with church whatsoever. So we've employed a youth worker. I think in the past the Kingdom Church was very small. Close-knit community, but now as the older generation are passing on and we're trying to get younger people on board, I feel we're becoming more open than we used to be. It's about not only influencing uh, your congregation, it's wider than that now, and, and I think even with your activities, bringing more people in and, and working in partnership with other organisations, and it's introduced them to church activities as well. Well, I got involved with Kenyan Church to the Bowls Club. You know, I met some of the members of the Babbin Club, and they told me there was a Bowls tournament coming up, so I went along, and then that's how it started. The Bowling Club's been a fantastic opportunity. Um, you know, not only for the bowling club here, but interaction with other bowling clubs. And that's been a major, major outreach. We've also been involved with action on hearing loss uh, for the ladies group here on a Tuesday morning once a month. We've also been involved with the BDA, British Deaf Association. So we're getting involved with the different deaf groups and organisations, uh, which is very, very important. Uh, because they realise now we're there to work with them, as we want them to work with us. So if we're going to reach the deaf community, we need to be working with the organisations that are in the deaf community and get to know them, they get to know us. Well, there's a great atmosphere at the lunch club, people coming on Thursday. But I have to say, during the week, there's not many deaf people popping in and it's very quiet. We also have our fun nights, which is great because uh, the church is open to everybody. Doesn't matter your colour, your creed, or your religion. We welcome everybody into this church, and we do get the Protestant and the Catholic community into the church, and that's what we want: people to come along and feel welcome here, and uh, feel they can be part of this church. Really, what we're trying to do is encourage a lot more young people to come on board, so that the church continue its life. I, I know we're older people; we have to take a back seat now. I don't feel old. But I do feel that it's important to have more young people coming on board. I would say the King and Church supports deaf people. It would be supportive because I can see that the King and Church is growing, but it's not growing very fast. It is a slow process and it will take time. And I am also trying to encourage other people to build the church along the lines of what God wants. Obviously you have to follow what God wants us to do. So I think the church have got a, a role also to play in uh, education and awareness of uh, Presbyterian Church throughout Ireland and uh, I think that that's really where Glenn and, and the staff are now reaching out and I think it's about um, more inclusive church. So as a church, we're, we're uh, delighted to be part of the Presbyterian Church uh, and we want to be part of the Presbyterian Church and the Presbyterian Church community. Uh, we, we were happy to go out to any uh, church service, any organisation, any part of the church that would welcome us to come along and speak about the deaf community. Well, I can remember there was a local support committee recently and they were talking about how they would like to raise awareness. They were talking about maybe getting local ministers in to talk about, find out about what happens within the churches, how they can make contact with deaf people, and about building those links. And maybe that would help the ministers become more deaf aware. And that would be more helpful in the future. But also, Glenn has started visiting some hearing churches and doing some preaching out there. So hopefully, they will get to come become more aware of us that way as well. What I would like to see is all Presbyterian churches not necessarily joining us, but just becoming more aware and more understanding of what deafness is about and also for hard of hearing people, any hard of hearing members of the congregation they might have who might be encountering problems. What we have here is sign language and we have a loop system within the King and Church. I've undertaken a piece of uh, research in East Belfast and it was interesting that a number, particularly of older, deaf, of older people with hearing loss, were not going to church because they weren't getting anything out of it. They wanted to be there. I think that is something that the church obviously is going to have to take into consideration. That's just not profoundly deaf people sign language users, but people who have become deaf and are hard of hearing, where there are really big numbers. And I think we have to look at ways of how that can be improved, and that may well be in t terms of technology and um, making better use of speech to text. There are a lot of facilities out there to, to use. There's electronic note taking, which is a great facility to 
uh, work with the hard of hearing. It's also great as well for foreign people coming in to the country. That can be used to communicate with them as well as PowerPoint. PowerPoint should be more suited to the deaf community and you can learn basic sign language even on the internet, which is a great facility and on your mobile phone. And the deaf community will appreciate that. We want to uh, share the gospel with the deaf community. Uh, it's not only the hearing needs to hear the gospel, but the deaf do. And we want to get that across and how much to Jesus loves them and give his life for them and wants to be part of their life. And we want to share that with them that they might know the gospel for themselves.